It's the news Tyrese wanted. He's going to college. Not just any college, but the state university near the town where his grandparents live. He's always had a dream of going to college, but because he was an average student, he wasn't sure he would be accepted, and money was a factor. But this letter was proof that he was on his way to fulfilling his dream of becoming a veterinarian. Dr. Tyrese Williams. It sounds good. This letter is good news for him and for his mother and younger brother and sister. He's the first to go to college. Tyrese isn't the only one getting such a letter. Thousands more, just like him, are getting similar correspondence all over the country. These acceptance letters get these future students closer to social and economic mobility, making them proud, contributing citizens, and giving them the chance of making their mark in the world. Although he doesn't know it, Tyrese and others can thank Justin Smith Morrill for their opportunities. Morrill didn't have the chance to attend college, and he wanted to make sure no other child was denied such an opportunity. After many attempts to move the country toward a better educational system, in 1862, the United States Congress finally passed and President Lincoln signed into law what has become known as the Morrill Act. The Morrill Act granted each state the proceeds from the sale of public land that could be used to establish colleges designed to teach agriculture, military tactics, and the mechanical arts, as well as classical studies. This way, members of the working class could obtain a liberal and practical education. These were colleges accessible to all, but especially to the sons of toil. Morrill's land-grant bill was designed to provide education to advance all, black and white alike. But due to segregation, the opportunity for black people in the southern and border states to attend college was not an option. To correct this discrimination, Justin Morrill developed what became known as the Second Morrill Act. This Second Morrill Act established in 1890, allowed the southern and border states to establish one black and one white institution and still be in compliance. Both of these schools were to be supported with a just and equitable distribution between black and white schools. These land-grant institutions became known as 1890s and carry that distinction to this day. It's been 130 years since the Second Morrill Act passed, and in that time, tens of thousands of students have passed through the doors of the country's 19 1890 land-grant universities. From small colleges to major universities, the 1890s carry the distinction of being among some of the country's elite universities. The 1890s inspired thinkers. The 1890s developed entrepreneurs. The 1890s create professionals. The 1890s are student-empowering, real-world, innovative, practical, creative, community economic engines. And 130 years later, the 1890s still maintain a close relationship with the USDA, a connection that provides a steady and continuous funding source. But if the Second Moral Act was only about educating students, then the 19-1890 universities would be indistinguishable from the country's other historically black colleges and universities. Land-grant universities also have a mission to help solve the problems and concerns plaguing communities. They are also called to share that information in a format that is easily understood by even the common man. They have a mission to conduct research and to extend that knowledge to the community. Land-grant universities are part of a state's economic engine. This country's 1890 land-grant universities take pride in knowing that they provide relevant and distinctive teaching, discovery, and engagement programs that address the priorities and challenges of the global society for a broad spectrum of students. This is particularly important for first-generation college students and those who have limited opportunities. The 1890s can also address nutrition-related health disparities of underserved and other populations with an emphasis on obesity prevention and other wellness-focused programs. They enhance capacity, marketability, 
profitability, sustainability, and diversity in agricultural enterprises for small and limited resource operations through research-based solutions. The 1890s provide the necessary skills and research to help small farmers develop profitable alternative enterprises. They engage youth, especially those with limited resources, in leadership development and in programs and activities that enhance their understanding and interest in science, technology, engineering, and math when planning their education and careers. While pursuing higher education, the 1890s institutions also want to make sure these young people are actively involved in programs that will enhance their self-esteem, build self-confidence, and provide positive social and physical activities. They offer heightened opportunities for students to significantly enhance the resilience of individuals, families, and communities for upward social and economic mobility and personal satisfaction. Through the cooperative extension model, these colleges and universities can provide programs to develop and expand national and international access to sufficient, safe, and nutritious food, as well as ensure that this knowledge is passed on. The 1890s can engage individuals and communities in environmental stewardship and in the sustainability, management, and enhancement of natural resources. They can also conduct cutting-edge research to generate new knowledge and solutions to major challenges in the food, agricultural, and related sciences, answering the questions that help move our citizens forward. The 1890s are listening to the small farmers. Many of them have limited resources, yet love the land and still find value in growing food. The 1890s recognize the issues and concerns of our underserved communities and make their issues a priority. Yes, we have our place and we are proud to continue to provide solutions and innovations to address global priority issues. We recognize our historical significance as land-grant universities. It is now 130 years later and they know they still have an obligation to provide access and enhance opportunities. We want to see Tyrese and other students have the opportunities they deserve to attend college prepare themselves for the world of work, and make positive contributions to the global community. We are the 1890 land-grant universities. Even as we manage through the current COVID pandemic, we celebrate the tremendous accomplishments of the past 130 years, and our universities continue to grow stronger each year. In fact, as a result of the 2018 Farm Bill, we have received new and significant federal investments. We've launched three centers of excellence at three separate 1890 institutions. These centers of excellence, working across the 19 universities comprising the 1890 system, will fund outstanding teaching, innovative research, and impactful extension projects to increase the agricultural productivity to enhance academic achievement in food, agriculture, natural resources, and human sciences. The new 1890 scholarship program Launched this year will better position each of the 1890 institutions, including Virginia State University, to recruit undergraduate students who are interested in careers in food, agriculture, and related sciences. And thanks to Congress's increased investments in capacity building programs, the 1890s land-grant institutions will continue to build their institutional capacities in teaching, research, and extension. Along with our public and private sector partners, the 1890 land-grant universities are preparing for an exciting future as we continue our mission to provide access and enhance opportunities.